Good morning. My name is First Lady Cherie, and I'm so grateful that you have decided to join us in our virtual worship experience. On behalf of our outstanding pastor, Pastor Marlon, the leaders and members of St. Luke, you are welcome. At this time, I would like to invite you to join us as we celebrate the grace and goodness of God. At this time, please welcome our praise team. Me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. My feet shall stand within thy gate. Lord God, I bless your name. I'm so excited to be here on this morning. Won't you come on and bless the Lord with me? Who's excited to be here with me? Hey! Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 out to somebody right now and tell them it's about to go down 
at St. Luke AME Church. Why don't you send them a link to the worship experience so that they can participate in worship with us. We don't want you to watch, we want you to worship. We believe that wherever you are, the spirit of the true and living God is going to rest, ride, rest, rule, and abide in that space. And whatever it is that you need from God, God is going to move and God is going to bless you. And so why don't you just reach out to a couple of people and let them know we are about to begin our worship experience. We are so, so excited about what God is doing and what God has done. And we know that our God is going to show up in this space. Come on, just take that moment and evangelize this morning. Send a text message, make a quick phone call, and tell somebody there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. If, if you would, uh, if you're texting, if you're calling, pause for just a moment as we bow before the Lord, and as we have a little talk with Jesus to prepare our hearts and minds to receive what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we praise you. For God, your name is worthy of praise. God, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we proclaim that you are worthy. God, we do want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for how you have sustained Thank you for how you have watched over and kept us. And God, now as we enter into the preaching moment, we ask that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. We ask that you would give us a heart to receive and the will to, I do pray, God, that they would be doers of your holy word. For truly thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory both now and forever. People of God said, amen. Amen. It's not too late to invite somebody to come and worship with you. Come on, tell them that they don't even have to burn any gas. All they've got to do is just log on and then they are plugged in. I want you to go with me this morning to Genesis second chapter. I actually want to read two passages of scripture for you. First, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and then I want to go to Genesis chapter 3 and I want to read verses 8 through 10 and I'll be reading from the new revised standard version of God's holy word you follow along in whatever version that you have Genesis 2 beginning at verse 7 from the new revised standard version of God's holy word and the Bible declares then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The man became a living being. Going over to Genesis 3, beginning at verse 8. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. I want to share with you this morning from the thought, from the theme, Where are you? Where are you? About three weeks ago, God placed in my spirit a word of encouragement and empowerment to liberate those who are held captive by the invisible prisons they impose on themselves. The prisons that are created by way of comparison. The prisons that are created by the overwhelming desire to do rather than to be. That is the overwhelming desire to live as human doings and not as human beings. And this week I had two encounters that served as confirmation that it was time to preach what God had placed on my heart. One encounter came in the form of a text message. 
text message I received was from a former colleague, colleague. And it started by saying, I have some heavy news. As I continued to read the text message, I found out that a student that I worked with a couple of years ago had committed suicide. It was heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking to know that someone so young is no longer with us and they had so much life ahead of them. I do think it's important to note the instructive language that Dr. Rita Walker employs in reference to suicide in her book, The Unapologetic Guide to Black Mental Health. Dr. Walker says, and I quote, Keep in mind that people do not commit suicide. Suicide is not a crime, just as cancer is not a crime. Some have died by suicide. Dr. Walker makes the helpful distinction that people do not commit suicide, but there are people who have died by suicide. Dr. Walker goes on to say that people who die by suicide, they don't want to die, they just want their emotional pain to end. And I come to you today as a pastor. I am not a mental health professional. But I come to you today to speak as a pastor who is concerned for the people. And as a pastor, I know that life can become overwhelming for many different reasons. But today I want to begin a journey that will allow us to be liberated and delivered from the purpose-driven dogma that I myself have preached and proclaimed. The purpose-driven dogma that pushes us to reach further, to maximize potential, to do and accomplish great things, to the neglect and to the overshadowing of seeing the value of who we are apart from our accomplishments. And that's why today I want to begin a series entitled, You Are Purpose. The goal of the series is to look at biblical models that showcase the intrinsic, not the instrumental value of humanity. That highlights the intrinsic, not the instrumental value of humanity. Intrinsic value is the value that someone or something has inherently. The value someone or something has for itself, not because of its impact, not because of its influence, not because of the consequences that it creates. And that means even if you have no followers on social media, even if no one likes, subscribes, or follows your post, even if you don't have, have a, a large me measure of influence, even if you have never made an impact, what that means is that you still have value. That's, that's intrinsic value, the value that someone or something has for itself, and I declare today that you have intrinsic value. See, instrumental value is value that is based upon what something can produce. Money is an example of instrumental value because money in and of itself has no value. Money is simply printed paper and it is only valuable because of what it can get and what it can produce. And a challenge that we are faced with is living in a culture that defines the value of humanity based upon instrumental value. This summer, my wife and I, we are, are taking time to read together as a family. We read one of my favorite books, The Autobiography of an Ex-Colored Man by James Weldon Johnson. We are in the process of reading Between the World and Me by ta Coates. And another book that we are reading at a much slower pace 
is before the Mayflower. Lerone Bennett Jr., the former executive editor at Ebony Magazine, a man who is known or who was known before his death within the African American community as the people's historian. In his classic text, Before the Mayflower, he, he demonstrates the genius and the rich legacy of the African diaspora before slavery. And because our history has been whitewashed, and because we as a people have, have had to overcome so much, we find a sense of pride and accomplishment in celebrating African American first first African-American millionaire, first African-American to be elected, the first African-American to graduate from a prestigious institution. The list of, of first African-Americans is a source of pride and accomplishments. And I will say, as an aside, it really is a shame that in 2020 we still have first Help me, Holy Ghost. But in our text today, I, I want to recognize that Adam and Eve stand in the tradition of first. They are the ultimate first. It is an honor that belongs only to them. Adam and Eve are the trailblazers for humanity. And what is so unique about Adam and Eve is that they did absolutely nothing to position themselves to be first. Adam and Eve didn't overcome struggle. They didn't finish at the top of their class. Their value was not based on what they accomplished. I hope you understand that. Their value was not based on some uh, uh, attribute they had attained. Uh, their value was based simply on the fact that they were the handiwork of God. Their value was not based on, on what they did. Their value was based on who they were. And I want to take just a moment this morning, and I want to celebrate you. I, I want to take a moment to remind you that you were formed and fashioned by the Almighty God, that, that you have the official seal of the divine creator stamped on your life, and you are somebody special. Ah, Jesus, I, I want to take a moment and celebrate you, not for what you've done, not for what you've accomplished, not because you have degrees, not because of your job title, not because of any award or accolade, not because of the boards that you sit on, not because of the leadership that you've provided, not because of your social status, but I want to celebrate you just for you. I want to celebrate you because as the psalmist said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are one of one. You are an original. You are phenomenal. There has never been and there will never be another like you. When God made you, God broke the mold and every day you wake up, the world is blessed because of your presence. And that's why you should pick up your head. That's why you should stick out your chest. That's why you should walk like you've got whales pumping in your living room. That's why you should stand tall and walk proud and laugh like you've got gold mines digging in your own backyard. Come on this morning. That's that old school. That's that classic Maya Angelou. But Jay Cole said it this way we ain't picture perfect but we worth the picture still and all that means is that apart from your accomplishments apart from your legacy apart from the titles apart from the positions and all the essential markers and all the external markers you are purpose and you've got intrinsic value Oh, you ought to testify this morning, I am valuable. I am valuable. But this morning, I want to push the idea of intrinsic value a little bit further. Because it takes more than positive 
affirmations to overcome the challenges of recognizing and becoming comfortable with our intrinsic value. Understanding intrinsic value means overcoming the desire to define oneself through instrumental value. That is defining yourself by accomplishments in the things that you do. See, in order to embrace intrinsic value, it is necessary that you see yourself as one that is created in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. See, you are more than the combination of chromosomes from your mother and father. Though you come from your parents, though you have your mother's eyes and your father's smile, your greater identity is rooted in the image of God. And just as God is triune, you are a complex being comprised of body, soul, and spirit. It is your body uh, through the five senses that allow you to connect with the visible world. It is your body through your five senses that allows you to connect with the touchable, tangible things of this world. Your body is the outward, visible part of who you are. It is what you see when you look in the mirror. Your body affords you the ability to experience the sights, the sounds, the taste, the smell, and the feel of this physical realm. But you are more than your body. You are more than your physical makeup. You also have a soul. And though you cannot see your soul, your soul is just as real as your physical body. Your soul represents your cognitive function. The Greek word for soul is suke. Suke is, is where we get the root, suke rather, is the root word for psychology. Your, your soul is then comprised of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your soul enables you to think, reason, consider, remember, and imagine. Your soul provides expression to your emotions and, and, and feelings of happiness, sorrow, anger, and joy. They, they all take place in your soul. It is your soul that allows you to, to, to exercise your will, which enables you to choose and make decisions. Your soul, that is your mind, your will, and your emotions, it shapes your personality and how you show up in the world. But we are not just soul and body. In fact, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, even more than a body and even more than a soul, you are spirit. The, the, the deepest and, and most hidden part of, of your being is spirit. And it is by your spirit that you connect to the spiritual realm. It, it, is, it is your spirit that enables you to be in relationship with God. Uh, it is your spirit that, that, that empowers you to, to have a little talk with Jesus. Uh, it, it is by your spirit that, that you can testify, I know God is real. It is your spirit that, that connects you to God and allows you to fellowship with your creator. And in order for you to embrace your intrinsic value, it is necessary that you see yourself as one who is created in the image of God. See, you, you can't be comfortable in your own skin if you don't know what's in you. And, and at the core, you are spirit. That means, listen to this, if you neglect your spirit, then you lose a sense of your value. Uh, you, you, you thought Bible study was just your religious duty. You, you thought 
the prayer meeting was just something you did at a ritual and routine. But the reality is, when you are practicing the spiritual disciplines, when you are engaging in the spiritual disciplines, you are helping to fortify who you really are. See, accomplishments, what, what they do is they feed your ego. The, the accolades that you receive, what they do is they feed your soul. Uh, the, the titles that accompany your name, the positions uh, that you hold, the promotions that you receive, and the awards that you get, they feed your soul. But the truth is, uh, if those honorifics uh, start coming up missing, uh, and if uh, you no longer uh, hear the applause, uh, what really happens uh, when you stop being praised uh, for the things uh, that you've done well, uh, then your world gets turned upside down uh, because when you end your 15 minutes of fame uh, you can find yourself depressed uh, and unhappy uh, with your life uh, because instrumental value uh, it seeks validation uh, for what it produces uh, and when that validation is missing uh, you can begin to question yourself and this in turn it impacts your physical body it begins to add stress in your life. It can cause you to lose sleep. It can cause you to gain weight. It can cause you to experience health complications. And it can even push you to the point where you start to lose your mind, wondering how you can get back to that place of prominence, how you can get back to that place when everybody knew your name, how you can get back to the place when everybody was patting you on the back. See, looking for validation for the instrumental value that you create, it will even and calls you uh, to punish your body uh, grinding uh, all day and grinding uh, all night uh, trying to impress uh, and win the approval of others but if you would just feed your spirit if you would just feed your innermost being if you would just nourish your spirit uh, then God could liberate you God could set you free and God could reaffirm the value that you have in him see instrumental value is about what you do but intrinsic value is recognizing who you are instrumental value it strives for fulfillment and purpose intrinsic value sees that you are purpose say with me our text says the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being when I say man, of course, I'm referring to both male and female. It says the man became a living being, not a living doing, but a living being. Listen, listen very carefully. What I want you to understand is that before you are able to do, you first have to be. If you begin to pursue purpose without understanding and embracing your intrinsic value, you will always be searching for that elusive place called there and never finding the peace and fulfillment that you're looking for. And that's why I'm glad that Adam and Eve hold the distinguished honor of first. I'm glad that that they are the trailblazers of humanity. I I'm glad they hold the distinguished honor of first, and the reason I'm glad is because they did such a horrible job. I'm not trying to throw shade this morning on Adam and Eve, but truth is, they did a horrible job. 
Bible readers, you know the story. They had everything that they could have ever wanted. They were living in paradise. God had granted them access to all they would ever need. They didn't have to pay any bills. They didn't have to worry about sickness. They did not have to be concerned with the pandemic. They were living the good life. All they had to do is leave the tree of the knowledge of good and evil alone. But instead of obeying God, they chose to listen to the serpent. There were, of course, severe consequences for their actions. As a result of their actions, sin entered into the world. Adam and Eve's act of defiance, it, it demonstrates that there are certain actions that we can do that cause separation from God. Certain actions that we can engage in that, 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 that cause us to be separated from God, and those things are called sin. See, sin separates us from God, and essentially what sin does is it starves and neglects our spirit, which causes us to lose sight of who we really are. And as we start this new series, You Are Purpose. I could think of no better place to begin. Adam and Eve did a horrible job. They, they were tested and they failed. Now sometimes wonder how do you fail a test with only one question that God gave you the answer to. And that's why I could think of no better place to start than right here with Adam and Eve because there is revelation in their failure. See, as a result of their failure, God asked Adam a very pointed question. God asked Adam, where are you? And I want to submit to you that that is a spiritual question. And it was one that Adam didn't understand. See, it's not that God was unaware of where Adam was located. Where are you is a spiritual question, which means, uh, uh, in essence, uh, it is a question of intrinsic value. The question is not, where are you physically located? God is asking Adam, where is the man that I formed from the dust of the ground? and breathe the breath of life into, and he became a living being. Where is the man that, that I created in my image and in my likeness? And listen to, to Adam's response. Genesis 3 verse 10, Adam said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now, what I want you to notice is that Adam had always been naked. Adam's nakedness is not a new reality. Since the time God created Adam, since the time God formed him, Adam was naked. But now, Adam has a different perspective of his nakedness. Adam went from being confident in, in his appearance to now being self-conscious about the way that he looked. Adam went from being self-assured to second-guessing how he was being viewed. Ah, oh, Jesus. And all of this is taking place because Adam began to define his worth based on instrumental value. Instrumental value is, is based on, on what you can produce and accomplish. And when you are producing well, you have a high view of yourself. But when you miss the mark, you begin to devalue yourself. See, they missed the mark. Adam and Eve together missed the mark. And when it happened... God called them out and God questioned them and God said, where are you? 
See, when it comes to understanding our intrinsic value, I want you to hear this. There is a blessing in their failure. See, the, 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 the blessing can actually be seen when you consider how horrible they did. Adam and Eve hold the distinguished honor of being the trailblazers of humanity and they did absolutely nothing to position themselves to be first. And, and when they got that position, when they stepped into that position, uh, they didn't produce for the good, but they actually created a mess. Now, if God wanted to, God could have ended their existence and just started over. But instead, when Adam and Eve messed up, we see that their intrinsic value meant so much to God that God moved heaven and earth to preserve their life. That God valued their humanity so much that he moved heaven and earth to preserve their existence. God valued their humanity not because of what they did, not because of what they accomplished, not because of them fulfilling their purpose. God moved heaven and earth to preserve their life because God loved them for who they were. And that's really what I came to say today. I just want you to know that regardless of what you do and regardless of what you've done, you are the apple of God's eye. That, that if God moved heaven and earth to preserve Adam and Eve's life, then God will do the same for you. I just came here today because I want you to know that your value is not based on what you can accomplish or the legacy you leave. Yes, God has created you with purpose, but God also created you on purpose because you are Purpose. You are created in the image and likeness of God, and you have great value apart from anything that you can do. And if you would allow me, I just want to take a moment and celebrate you, not for what you've done, not for what you have accomplished, not because of your degrees or your job title, not because of any award or accolade, not because of the the boards that you sit on, not because of the leadership that you have provided, not because of your social status. I just want to celebrate you for you. I want to celebrate you because your life is valuable. I want to celebrate you because you are worthy of respect. I want to celebrate you because you deserve to be treated with dignity. And it has nothing to do with how big your dreams are. It has nothing to do with the vision that you have for your life. It has nothing to do with the goals that you are pursuing. Your life is precious simply because of who you are. You are a breath of fresh air. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are one of one. And every day you wake up, the world is is blessed with your presence apart from accomplishments apart from legacy apart from titles apart from positions apart from all external factors you are purpose and your life has value you ought to testify that I am valuable and I just want to let you know this morning that your life has so much value and that value is not connected to what you can produce or what you can do. In fact, God loved you so much and God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son because if there were any areas in your life where you messed up, God said, I want to restore the value that you think you lost. God says, I want you to know that you are valuable and I'll move heaven and earth just for you. 
Listen, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you have, have fallen out of relationship, if you are in a space and place in your life where you are feeling undervalued, today I invite you to connect with a man named Jesus. Today I, I invite you to surrender your will and to place your hand in the master's hand. Because when you begin to nourish your spirit, you'll begin to see yourself correctly. When you begin to nourish your spirit, you'll begin to see yourself as God sees you. And you'll begin to understand your true value. Today, if, if, if we can pray for you. Today, if you, if you want to give your life to Jesus, we want you just to leave a message on any of our social media platforms. If you're following us right now on YouTube, just leave us a message. If you're following us right now on Facebook, just leave us a message. And if you want to visit our website and just let us know, we are here and we are ready to pray for you because you are valuable. What a dynamic word from our pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor Merlin, for encouraging us and reminding us that we are purpose and that we are created in God's image and God cares for us. Thank you for that reminder. At this time, I would like to invite you to give. You can do so by using any of our giving platforms below. The best way to give is to go to our website at stlukeambwaco.org, click on the Give tab, and follow the directions from there. Thank you so much for your kindness and generosity. Because of your support, we have been able to do the work of ministry here in the city of Waco. All of our announcements can be found on our new website. Please go to our website and check out our events and get connected with us. Again, thank you so much for being a part of our virtual worship experience. We look forward to seeing you on next week. Amen. We thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And it is our prayer and it is our desire that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are valuable. You are valuable. Apart from what you do, you have value. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forever. God bless you. We'll see you next week.